Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be here. It's great to be back in Northwestern Ontario. I've been in Ottawa, Quebec City, Montreal, and Toronto for the past three days, suffering miserably from hay fever. I'm just recovering as soon as I got back into the woods. Things have improved, uh, and I feel much better. Uh, but uh, uh, I want to congratulate all of you for converging on this beautiful city, the second most beautiful city uh, in Northwestern Ontario. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm um, it's shameless. He said that. Um, the uh, opportunity this morning to make some announcements on behalf of uh, FedNor and my capacity as the Minister of State uh, for uh, FedNor and the Ring of Fire, the Regional Minister uh, for Northern Ontario. Of course, we recognize the importance of this city uh, in the context uh, of Northern Ontario and particularly for Northwestern Ontario. And I want to congratulate those people uh, for their hard work uh, that we announced uh, today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have spent a, uh, oh, the other thing I want to say is uh, thank you to the Victoria Inn for not serving chicken breasts. Uh, I go to a lot of these receptions and, and dinner, dinners and working lunches and I thought, oh, I, if I see another chicken breast, I think I'm going to just go crazy. Chicken thighs and chicken legs. So thank you very much for me personally. That was a very good lunch, by the way. I've been traveling across northern Ontario in the past few months and I have been meeting with municipal leaders, people in industry, uh, community stakeholders and individual citizens on a myriad of items. We have spoken uh, about forestry, we have spoken about mining, we have talked about diversification, economic diversification, uh, and we have developed a narrative, I hope, at least coming from my office uh, and with my provincial counterpart, Minister Gravel, and with our municipal leaders, uh, a spirit of enthusiasm and a positive look up, uh, outlook. I don't think there are any better Canadians equipped, at least that, that I've seen in my well-traveled uh, background, to um, be more resilient, whether it's weather or the industries that we have risen and fallen with, uh, we remain. And we are, without question in my mind, uh, the sturdiest of kind that there is. And our role moving forward is to ensure that Northern Ontario, Northern Ontario communities have the tools that they need to prosper in a more sustainable way. We're seeing innovation in the forest sector, in the mining sector. We're seeing diversification uh, into mining supply and services at a world-class level, of course, uh, out there in North Bay, just to, to give an example. We're seeing Sudbury uh, thrive not just in mining, but also in things like astrophysics uh, and plant uh, and uh, uh, biology science with some wonderful assets there. We're seeing out in the great Kenora riding that Kenora sees itself, the city of Kenora, standing shoulder to shoulder with the Mount Tromblons, the Muskokas, the Banffs, and the Whistlers of the world. We see active hubs like we do in Suluka with a thriving and dynamic burgeoning uh, health care cluster. I always run the risk of citing examples and leaving people out, uh, but I do have to get through this speech, so I'm going to stop there, all to make the point uh, that as collective leaders, our discipline, our exercise, and my respectful view uh, is to engage in a process of collaboration. Moving forward, we have a lot to look forward to. In the largest of scales, I talk about the Ring of Fire, for which I have assumed responsibilities for. It has the potential to be a legacy resource development. I think it behooves us all, as community leaders involved in our various associations, to be realistic, but be effective in understanding how our communities can play a role in this development. There's a lot at stake. The world is watching us. Uh, and this opportunity represents something perhaps that we have not seen uh, in Northern Ontario, at least uh, as I understand it. And so um, the question here today, and the one that I wanna uh, take some of your time to talk about uh, is the federal government's role uh, in ensuring that the right building blocks are there. They are put in place so that your communities can experience 
responsible, sustainable, and progressive economic development. It sounds like a fairly broad term, but it deals with things like infrastructure, technology, and innovation in the things that we are good at, and there are many. And so it's been from 2009 to 2013 in the versions of Canada's Economic Action Plan that our government has put into motion a course of action and initiatives that are helping municipalities and communities address the priorities that they have identified. As the Mayor of Red Lake rightly uh, points out, uh, in the wake of Canada's Economic Action Plans 2009 through 2013, municipalities feel like they are on an, a level, equal playing field with their respective <coughs> provincial and federal governments. We have seen examples through these Canada's Economic Action Plan versions of substantial federal government investment in our community infrastructure, and most recently the Community Infrastructure Improvement Fund. This was introduced as part of Canada's Economic Action Plan in 2012, and I'm delighted to report uh, to you that many of these projects are well underway and have been met with great enthusiasm across our region. I was in Pickle Lake just recently to announce a SIF investment to enable that township uh, to repair and completely reline the local water tower. It's hard to think of a more important concern for a community than safe drinking water for its families, for our children, which I have one now and I can be included in that conversation. Beautiful Abigail May, born a couple months ago. Um, the township of Pickle Lake will be able to provide its citizen with its rightful access to clean and safe drinking water uh, for years to come. Canada's Economic Action Plan 2013 announced a new Building Canada plan to help finance the construction of infrastructure across Canada. Notably, that plan also included commitments uh, for electricity, electrification uh, to our First Nations communities. Recent, just this morning I had an opportunity to announce for a First Nation just outside uh, of Thunder Bay here an opportunity to develop a new technology for electricity generation that will get, see them uh, get off of diesel generation uh, power. Um, these involve corridors, these are massive files, and I think that we have a lot to talk about and a lot of work to do. The reason for uh, my request to be here today was to ensure uh, that you folks understood, as I hope you already have, uh, that by my visibility at venues like this and my presence in as many communities as my schedule provides for, uh, you see the face of the federal government and you hear and understand our willingness to have a conversation about how we can make this already beautiful place even better. Uh, the plan specifically for infrastructure is $53 billion in new and existing funding for provincial, territorial and municipal infrastructure over the next 10 years uh, beginning next year. Combined with investments in federal infrastructure and First Nations infrastructure, total federal spending for infrastructure will reach $70 billion over the next decade. It seems like a lot of money and unreal uh, in some regards to us as a value it, it, as municipal politicians, but what it has translated into so far, and what I believe it will continue to do, is to fix things repair things, rehabilitate things, and replace things in full cooperation with our municipal and provincial leaders uh, to put our towns and cities and our First Nations communities in the best position possible to experience commercial, residential, and industrial growth. That means something very important to me that I have been putting out there in my capacity as the Minister of State responsible for FedNorth. Folks, make no mistake about it, as you continue to deal with our great FedNor team, we will be putting a particular emphasis on jobs. We're putting an emphasis on jobs so that our an internship program, so that our young people can stay in our communities, because they want to. We need to ensure, through our work at FedNor, that you have the tools you need to specialize in the things that work really well for your towns and cities, and I'll speak about that in a little bit. But this opportunity for infrastructure calls on all of us as partners, 
uh, to ensure we're making the right choices for our communities and thematically for the best interests of our region. And I'm happy to say uh, that my colleague in the House of Commons, Minister LaBelle, who many of the mayors from the Northwest had an opportunity to meet, is working on the parameters of this program, and I would expect an announcement to come late this year. I should also add that I have gratefully taken on the advice and counsel of many mayors across the region uh, for Northern Ontario's inputs to this infrastructure program. In the meantime, we will continue to work with you as full partners, municipalities working together to build Canada, to build Northern Ontario. And through Building Canada, the Government of Canada has already contributed for things like $3.4 million to the Nipigon Wastewater Treatment Program, uh, uh, upgrades to protect the health of local residents and water security and safety. The list goes on. In Dryden, of course, we are set to open uh, the wastewater treatment plan. There are priorities across the region that remind us that sometimes the infrastructure we build isn't always in, uh, visible. It isn't present to us in the, in the way that the White Cap Pavilion is in our beautiful downtown uh, Kenora or the train station uh, refurbishment in Sioux Lookout or the skyscraper in Sioux Lookout as we like to say. Uh, but Water, wastewater treatment, and the infrastructure that supports it under our roads is as important as anything that we can build as partners. And so our top priority is to work with you to create jobs, growth, and long-term sustainability and prosperity for our Northern Ontario communities. And this is where FedNor comes in. Developing programs and services that support jobs, innovation, community economic development, business growth, and competitiveness. I am proud to report that since April 2006, through FedNor, we have made significant investments to support more than 1,600 projects in Northern Ontario. We don't have to look very far to see the results of our investments. Any uh, Northern Ontario community I've been to has some kind of landmark project uh, that we can all take uh, credit for working on. Uh, one of the many sectors that has benefited from our investments is the growing health sciences and biotechnology cluster with the Thunder Bay Regional Research Institute at its core. It serves our region. It should be world class. The cluster is not only developing homegrown talent, it is helping us to expand in Sulukau that serves as a hub to more than 25 isolated and rogue First Nations communities that I've had the opportunity to work in most in my previous capacity as a nurse. Importantly, these are not just here um, to provide health care service. They are here to inspire our youth to go to college and university and become researchers, become scientists, become doctors, become nurses, become physiotherapists, become radiologists, and the list goes on. Uh, I'm sure everyone here is familiar uh, with FedNor's investments into the cyclotron that we made here in Thunder Bay. I added, I noted at the um, speech I gave at the Chamber of Commerce in Thunder Bay a couple of weeks ago that the world was gathered in Thunder Bay. For the first time in 25 years, experts involved in cyclotron development gathered here in Thunder Bay, in Northern Ontario, to talk about our competitive advantage in this development. These investments help to landmark our communities. They help us to connect dots, which is the theme of your meetings here over the past couple of days. These investments complement contributions made by our government, and in fairness, by the provincial government, to support jobs, to put these large-scale projects together, and create sustainable jobs uh, to provide quality services to Northern Ontarians. We are proud to support job creation. Did I mention the word job yet before my speech? It's come up here again. Yeah, yeah. um, through the Thunder Bay Regional Research Institute, we look forward to continuing these kinds of partnerships in research and commercial commercializations. Of course, you folks may or may not know that I have additional capacities, substantial ones at that, as the Minister of State responsible for science uh, and technology and innovation. And we will be working in a theater 
uh, near you not too soon, in the not too distant future to understand your thoughts and industry and academics thoughts on technology and innovation uh, specific to Northern Ontario. Like Thunder Bay, many Northern Ontario communities believe that waterfront development offers unique opportunities for economic growth, job creation, and long-term prosperity. For any of the mayors that I've worked with directly, uh, especially in my own riding, um, I have asked you uh, to focus on the things that you feel particularly well positioned, be it geographically uh, or for demographics or otherwise, uh, particularly good at. I mentioned Kenora's profile as a potential world-class uh, tourist destination. There are things on the service sector side uh, and education that we need to, to build on, but we feel like we're headed in the right direction. I talked about Sioux Lookout's uh, capacity in uh, a healthcare cluster. Dryden, just by way of example, is a community that has fared particularly well uh, when it comes to sports tourism. Uh, and Red Lake uh, obviously focused on other infrastructure projects that support uh, a gold boom uh, that until uh, the federal government started working more closely uh, with uh, the municipality of Red Lake, the mayor would often say uh, there's a gold boom but we don't know about it. So we've put those pieces together for that community as we have communities across this vast region that go back to the basics, creating jobs, supporting infrastructure for the communities and putting your communities in the best position you see fit to experience growth and sustainable long-term prosperity. Uh, we are working on downtown revitalizations, we are working on the infrastructure that I referred to earlier and we are focusing our efforts uh, more recently, obviously, on partnerships that we can establish with our academic uh, facilities that serve our region and with industries to ensure that when the forest, or as the forest sector returns, we're not just dusting off machines to cut board foot uh, because our dollar is commensurately slipping below uh, par value with the United States. That we are interested in the kind of innovation that will provide diversity within these sectors so that jobs stay in our communities. And I put the call out to our industry partners um, to think about it that way and what role the federal government and our provincial counterparts can do. That asks and that demands municipal leaders to think about the same thing. As I said earlier, the call here today beyond the politics of collaboration is for us to understand, be realistic uh, and reasonable, but strategic in terms of the things we really feel our towns and cities should focus on, its priorities with a view to how we can support uh, the region and connect the dots between our communities. Folks, effective community-based economic developments with job creation uh, and vision and initiative through uh, partnerships with the provincial government, the federal government, uh, and the municipalities are what's really going to change the game for us, if it hasn't already. So from FEDNOR to key strategic packages offered through the Economic Action Plan, such as the Build Canada Fund, the Community Adjustment Fund, or the Community Infrastructure Improvement Fund, our government has and will continue to make a difference in your communities. I want to switch gears for a moment and update you on another important development in Northwestern Ontario, in fact, for the entire province and beyond. It's a development that I spoke to earlier uh, called the Ring of Fire. I have been engaged in some very meaningful uh, meetings and roundtables uh, in Toronto just uh, yesterday or the day before um, with Cliffs and Neurant. Uh, there continue to be some market conditions that pose some challenges, uh, but uh, like the narrative I spoke about from the outset of my speech, of course, we are remaining positive. We have seen the resolution of a couple of key issues, which I think in the not too distant future will trigger some responses from our provincial counterparts, hopefully, uh, so that we can move forward synchronously uh, on this legacy project. 
As you know, this is potentially the biggest mining development in northern Ontario and one of the largest of its kind in the country, with an estimated 30 to $50 billion worth of minerals in the ground and a possible 5,000 direct and indirect jobs for northern, northerners in the <coughs> offering, this is an opportunity that we need to seize. And it's why our government thought it was vital to name and stylize a federal minister on this file to ensure that we provide a coordinated whole of government approach for this once in a lifetime legacy resource development. Being as passionate as I am for the potential for Northern Ontario, I was obviously thrilled then when the Prime Minister asked me to assume the responsibilities for Ring of Fire. The sheer enormity of the project and the challenges that have to be answered from planning and preparation to production and processing look a little daunting to be certain. And with so many partners and stakeholders at the table from communities, First Nations and private industry to different levels of government and citizens, this massive undertaking isn't for the faint of heart. It requires strong leadership, vision, and the will to collaborate. Heck, I've even made a new friend. His name is Bob Ray. We actually email back and forth uh, for some important things going on uh, now. One thing is certain, though, folks. We have to work together. From the federal government's perspective, it is incumbent upon us to ensure that our efforts and our resources are managed sustainably and carefully. And this will be at the heart of my role as the federal lead. I will work with my colleagues at Aboriginal Affairs, at Industry Canada, at Natural Resources Canada, and 12 other federal departments to ensure we speak with a single voice for your benefit. We will be engaging, as we already have been, other partners. And that also will be a critical part of the process moving forward. As politicians, we have a responsibility not to put the cart before the horse. We need to ensure that the foundational pieces uh, to the Ring of Fire development are being put in place. Uh, these manifest themselves in things like an announcement I recently made here in Thunder Bay with KCATs. Full cooperation with the Matawa communities, uh, we have created 260 seats for ab Aboriginal skills and training uh, at Confederation College focused on opportunities in the mining sector. With a particular emphasis for the opportunities in those isolated and remote First Nations communities that are so close, uh, proximally to the site. Uh, we have met with, uh, uh, and in fact, went to Casablanca Lake First Nation. I've met with Anishinaabe Aski, our Grand Chief, and its deputies, uh, and we have had robust conversations uh, with uh, industry partners uh, and First Nation communities and municipalities alike on. Uh, a narrative that um, hopefully uh, will A, continue to be positive, and B, will help us to understand what reasonable, realistic, uh, but important strategic uh, roles we can, we can play. The first platform, it seems to me, uh, is beyond Aboriginal skills training, is infrastructure. As I said earlier, there are power corridors to talk about. There's been discussion, and in fact, uh, processes to determine uh, how and what a road would look like. In the meantime, as we connect the dots for this region, we must ensure that just uh, in unison with the development of the Ring of Fire, we're thinking about the other infrastructure pieces that serve this vast region. Things like broadband and our capacity for the internet. Uh, these are also examples of things that help communities uh, be connected, stay connected, and provide opportunities for new things like communication and education uh, for the benefit uh, of their individual communities, but in my respectful view, for the benefit of the entire region to the extent uh, that we can place a particular emphasis on human resources for the Ring of Fire for Northern Ontarians Northern Ontarians working in their community or in this resource development from here who stay here. Now, I had always made the point when, I, when we built that magnificent airport in Red Lake, I actually went door to door and I had some folks say that the airport is really nice, but sometimes it reminds us that it was the kind of facility we 
needed because there were a lot of people flying in to our town to work and flying out. And I thought that was a pretty interesting observation, frankly. I mean, they're far better off than our two-bedroom house airport that we have in Kenora. Um, but frankly, what a unique and interesting piece of feedback from the constituent. Um, and so, in the wake of that, uh, Phil, uh, Vinette, and I uh, committed to focusing on the kind of uh, infrastructure that would support capacity for new neighborhoods to be built. Indeed, uh, their commercial development site now has a Super 8 and a Tim Hortons there. Uh, this is just the start. There are other proposed uh, big small box stores uh, for this now booming town. Uh, and so these are the kinds of th uh, things that we have to talk about, the kind of vision, excuse me, that we need. And I look forward uh, in the context of the Ring of Fire to the province's progress on their issues that they are currently working on. Uh, uh, Minister Gravel, you should all know, and I think you've heard it before, and I have a particularly effective uh, relationship. Uh, we don't, uh, we put partisan politics to the side. We focus on the priorities that matter for our great region. And I think, as I said earlier, all of our communities reflect that politics of collaboration at the provincial and federal level. You have a commitment from me here today uh, that notwithstanding the political dynamics that creep in from time to time, uh, Minister Gravel and I will continue uh, to move forward with and on behalf of the best interests of the people from this great region. I want to talk about specific initiatives around the Ring of Fire. You deserve to hear from me some of the things that we're, we're thinking about. Obviously, I said earlier, we understand that power corridors go beyond just the um, potential demand for the extraction site of Ring of Fire. We are doing consultations with First Nations communities through FedNor right now to understand the path forward to electrify many of our isolated remote communities. Obviously, the environmental consequences and the cost, the sheer cost, uh, not to mention the practical uh, problems we have getting diesel fuel into the, those communities with uh, the winter roads uh, asks us to think uh, even bigger than the Ring of Fire. Uh, Gold Corp, obviously, our friends who are active in Placer Dome and in the Red, the Red Lake sites um, need that energy as well. And we have the potential for some uh, more diversified forestry initiatives uh, that simply uh, are great ideas but can't move ahead because in some of our uh, smaller communities moving north, we don't have the KV capacity uh, to um, see those facilities go ahead. So it's this kind of thinking, these hydro corridors, ideas about Aboriginal skills training, putting our communities in the best position through their infrastructure priorities that uh, will make them welcome places for a new uh, people who want uh, and will come uh, to this region over time. I know everyone in this room has an appreciation for the beauty of our region, the historical and cultural importance for us as residents. We must therefore ensure that any resource development is done in a responsible way. We have to get that right and make it work for industry, for taxpayers, but most importantly for the people uh, in the communities throughout this region. This means moving forward as a collaborative, responsible resource development approach, a priority we identified in Canada's economic action plan. Despite what you have heard, or may have heard, your understanding of our uh, work in these regards has been to streamline uh, environmental frameworks, work more closely with the provinces to ensure uh, that there is no redundancy, that these, may, they, that these projects will not face unnecessary uh, delays, but the same, if not uh, seriously fortified, stringent guidelines on a project-to-project -project basis with respect to the environment uh, are in place. This project, uh, the Ring of Fire, is an exciting project for this region. It will not benef just benefit our region, it will benefit the province and this country, and it will put us uh, even farther along uh, 
uh, in our prominence as a major mining resource development country. We want to turn the needs of our communities into concrete results and focus on all levels government, all levels of government's participation in a plan that will see strategically our ability to move forward with the Ring of Fire, but also uh, to develop um, our uh, capacity uh, at the community level for other opportunities that many of you as community leaders are being presented with uh, from industry. The federal government's, from the federal government's position, FedNOR is always there on the ground. We have a great team led by uh, Amy DiMatteo. I believe he spoke to you yesterday and hopefully, well, very hopefully, uh, thematically you're hearing the same things from me as the minister responsible for FedNOR. Amy and I have uh, uh, converged on a couple of uh, important uh, priorities moving forward. The first one uh, is to ensure uh, that our timelines for project turnaround uh, have a benchmark uh, and that that's established and clear so that communities making applications to FedNOR have greater certainty about what they could, should, or would go through and inversely uh, may not be able to at that particular time. So I have undertook uh, to ensure that notwithstanding the excellent due diligence that our folks, our FedNOR teams put into each and every application, uh, that I would have some 12 working days uh, to uh, approve um, the applications put forward to me uh, from FedNOR. I don't know if Amy reported to you so far, but I can tell you I believe statistically, Amy, we've already seen uh, a marked improvement uh, in our turnaround times. Um, I also want to let you know as I finish up here and open the floor to questions uh, and comments that the FedNOR, um, the prominence of Northern Ontario in our cabinet uh, has uh, been uh, supported by um, a new position that I have created uh, in my ministerial uh, department, my minister's office. I'm pleased to report to you that um, I have a senior policy advisor uh, who serves me exclusively in the capacity of FEDNOR, uh, Ring of Fire, and my regional responsibilities for Northern Ontario, and that that person is from Northern Ontario. This has helped us connect uh, even stronger uh, to our community leaders, to our industry partners, and our academic partners. And it has helped ensure that moving forward, we have the ability uh, to maintain an effective relationship with you. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to be here today to put these words out to you, uh, to receive your questions and your comments, uh, and ensure that FEDNOR uh, and regionally Northern Ontario is a top priority for me uh, and for our government, and that we are ably present with a strong voice uh, at the government table. I can't stress the importance of that enough, and together I believe we will continue to accomplish the great things that we all know and we have all demonstrated our ability to do. I want to thank you for inviting me here today. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Greg Rickford and I'm the Member of Parliament for the Great Kenora Rising. It's a privilege and an honour to serve my constituents and in my capacities uh, as the Minister of State responsible for Science, Technology, Innovation, FedNOR and the Regional Minister for Northern Ontario serve you too. Thank you.